Hello, everyone, and welcome to today's UK Week Live Q&A session. My name is Jenna Hartzell, and I'm the British Council's Education Manager in the US. Today's session will focus on everything related to studying creative arts in the UK. Whether you're just thinking about applying or you already know which course you would like to take, this live event will give you an overview of how to prepare for your studies of creative arts in the UK. We're joined today by Melissa Grindon, Creative Projects Officer, and Katie Lang, International Recruitment Officer from Liverpool Hope University. We are also joined by Rian Jenkins, International Officer from Norwich University of the Arts, and Rian, Melissa, and Katie will be helping us to answer questions about the experience of studying a creative arts degree in the UK as an international student. In about 20 minutes time, we'll talk to Tom Quante, Senior International Officer from Solent University Southampton, and Yeva Lakute, Student Recruitment and International Relations Officer from Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Music and Dance, who will be answering all of your questions related to preparing for auditions and portfolios and what an experience is like studying at a conservatoire. Thank you, Katie, Melissa, and Rian for joining us today. Hi, everyone. Hi, thanks for having us. Thank you for being here. Um, for everyone in the audience, thank you for joining us today and make sure to type in your questions in the comments. We'll answer as many as we can as we go through the session. To start off, please feel free to say hello and let us know where you're joining us from. We'll start with some pre-prepared questions that we have about studying creative arts in the UK. And Rian, I'd like to start with asking you if a student is joining today and they haven't studied, for example, animation, film, photography, or a specific creative arts subject in high school, can they still apply to study it at a UK university? Uh, yes, uh, they, they can. Um, that is not a problem for, for us um, because essentially, you know, that's what we're going to teach you when you come onto, onto the course. So, um, you know, it doesn't matter if you don't have an, a background in those particular areas, for example, but, you know, for something like animation, you know, you may not have had the opportunity to work, um, you know, with 3D, but there are still lots of really good ideas and things that we would like to see um, and that will give us an indication of, of how you would do on the course. So, for example, um, you know, looking at your drawing skills, the kind of stories and ideas that you have, those things are going to be are going to be really important. It doesn't matter if you haven't had an opportunity to work on that particular program. Um, and the same with film, for example, you know, we understand you may not have had the opportunity to make the film that you want to make, um, but you instead you could um maybe put together a storyboard or um write a short script or, or something like that in, in terms of imagining the kind of thing that you would like to make if you did have the opportunity to to do that so um i definitely wouldn't put anybody off by not having had that that particular experience in school um but but there would be, you know you would still need to put together a portfolio of ideas um to, to be able to be admitted to the university thank you that's great advice um, moving to typical entry requirements for creative courses in the UK, um, Katie, could you share with us um, what are the typical entry requirements for creative courses in the UK? Yeah, of course. So obviously we're looking for your academic um, qualifications to begin with. Um, I'll hand over to my colleague Melissa in a second. I think there's a couple of additional things that particularly for the arts courses we'd be looking for. Um, Obviously, each university will assess qualifications slightly differently, so it would be definitely worth checking with the institutions that you're interested in with regards to exactly what they're looking for. Um, I wouldn't like to make a, a kind of a big judgment on that. But for ourselves, um, we'd be looking for um, your high school um, certificates, your high school diplomas, alongside um, if it's US quals, something like APs um, or ACTs, if it's you know IB and it's a more international um, qualification as well, that's fantastic. Um, obviously, again, every university 
university will assess those slightly differently and may have um, a different standard of exactly what they're looking for within those qualifications but that's generally what we'd be looking for academically. Um, Mel if you just maybe want to add to additional things like portfolios and that sort of thing. Yeah sure so it really does depend like Katie said on what subject you're looking to study but keep in mind for most universities and it can vary for dance and for drama, there'll always be an audition and this can consist of two monologues maybe that contrast um, or a dance piece. And you may also be asked to speak about your personal interest in those areas. So maybe a play you've recently seen or any work you've done previously in dance and drama. And then that also leads nicely on to like the fine arts. So if you want to study fine art or graphic design, you'll need a portfolio and also just general knowledge of that subject area. And that's again, similar for music. So we'll ask too so just bear in mind try and have some pieces ready that are nice and polished that will obviously impress the admissions team but also work on expanding your own personal knowledge too because that's what we're really looking for in the application obviously your own interests but how you can bring that into the degree itself so i hope that answers it definitely thank you and we have a question in the chat um about an audience member wanting to learn more about England and you are in the right place if you're watching our live. Um, we can definitely help you to learn more about England and the UK and I think that might be a good opportunity for us to hear a little bit from each of you about where your university is based within the UK and a little bit about your university if you could share just uh, a little bit about um, your university. So Rian, could we start with you? Um, could you tell us where Norwich uh, University of the Arts is located within the UK and a little bit about your institution? Absolutely, yes. Yeah. So we're based in Norwich, which is um, a mid-sized city in the east of England. Um, and not a lot of people know where where it is so don't worry if you if you don't at the moment uh, that's that's totally normal um but we our university is actually based in the city center um so we have a city campus uh with kind of 10 or 11 buildings based um in in the city of norwich which is a kind of very cultural um artistic um creative kind of um place uh, if you if you get the chance to to visit um, our university, we're we're a specialist arts university, so um, all of the courses that we offer are around art, design, media, architecture. Um, we also have an acting course as well, um, and and yeah, and they're all specialist you know subjects as I said. So kind of a smaller community of of creative people. So we only have about two thousand five hundred students. So um, quite small compared to compared to a lot of other universities in in the UK. Um, but yeah, I could I could go on for for a long time, but I'll I'll stop there for now. <laughs> Thank you so much. Um, yeah, it sounds like a wonderful place to be a student. Um, and Katie or Melissa, could you tell us about Liverpool Hope University, where it's located within the UK, and a little bit about the institution? Sure, I don't mind if you want to go first, Katie or me. Or... I'll let you go. <laughs> <laughs> so um, we're, because we are two campuses, so obviously this is mainly for creative arts, I'll um, just briefly touch on Liverpool Hope itself. So we're one of the many universities in Liverpool. Um, we're actually in the top two in Liverpool. Um, if you've never been before, you'll know it's an amazing city for the arts. There's so much rich culture and heritage. We've got so many museums and theatres um, and we have our two campuses. So we have our Hope Park campus and our creative campus. Um, but when you come to Liverpool itself, I would really advise if you ever get a chance to visit, take a proper look around all the universities that are on offer, particularly for the arts, and ask about any connections they have or any partnerships they have with local theatres and organisations, because that's what you'll be looking to do when you do your degree, especially as an international student, you'll want to make the most of your time there as much as possible. Katie, jump on the back of that. If you yeah, like. absolutely. So I was going to say it's quite um, an accessible city. Um, you may have have come sort of into Manchester or perhaps up from London to visit. It is a really well located city. Um, lots of accessible routes to other parts of the UK from Liverpool. Um, so it is a really popular student city, um, and it is a very vibrant student city. We have around fifty thousand students all across those those universities. Um, so it's a really thriving place, especially for the arts, as Mel said. Um, um, historically, it's it's quite a creative city, so um, I think there's plenty to offer. That also sounds like a fantastic place to be a student. 
Um, and thank you for for um, that question in the chat, um, learning more about England and the UK. And we want to welcome everyone watching us in the audience. Um, please do drop us a hello in the chat where you're joining us from. And if you have any questions, please do submit those there. I'm returning to some of our questions around studying creative arts in the UK. Um, I wanted to ask Rian, so we mentioned portfolios a little bit earlier, and I was wondering what are UK universities looking for in an art and design portfolio? Yeah, sure. So obviously, I can talk more about, about what we usually ask for, and, and it might be slightly different from university to university, but um, I hope some of these core cool things might you know resonate with um, with most universities um so we would be really interested in uh, ideas development so what we're looking for is not just people showing us that they've been able to make a final product a final piece of work um but we're really interested in seeing the process of that um so giving us your, your sketchbook work and um the how ideas have, have developed is going to be really important and that's going to tell us a lot about how um, how the student works and how they can actually develop whilst they're, they're on the course. Um, we need to see evidence of making skills. So any way that the student likes to, to create that is um, hopefully relevant to the course that they're applying for. Um, so obviously, you know, drawing skills is going to be really important for a lot of our courses. Um, but for something like photography, for example, you're not going to be doing um, drawing. So you don't necessarily need to show us that. So it's going to be a slightly different um, set of things for, for that course. Um, and lastly, inspirations and, and influences. So we want to see um, you know, that you have some understanding of the context of, um, of art or, or whichever subject area you're, you're going into, um, and that you do actually have some, um, maybe some people or some artists um, that you get inspiration from and, and how that works. Um, so those would be the, the, the main things that we would that we would be looking for. And obviously, in terms of the the way that you present the work, the amount of work that you produce, that can really vary between um, between universities. But um, I think those core things um, hopefully would be useful for, for anybody applying to any UK university. Fantastic. Thank you. Um, and moving to um, we had some questions around if students can study more than one creative subject. So Melissa or Katie, um, could you help us with this question if students can study more than one creative subject at a UK university? Yeah, sure, I'll jump on because I know Katie is the mastermind behind qualifications and I do more of the arts. So um, with Liverpool Hope for an ex as one example, um, we've got so many combined courses available. So one of these examples would be my degree I did, which was dance and English language both creative subjects in their own way, but essentially the course will be split 50-50. Um, so an example of how your timetable may work would be on a Monday all day, you'd be in dance lessons and you'd normally get two days um, known as like study days or free days per week. And then on a Thursday and Friday split, you will have like an English lesson, for example. So it's all about balancing it out, but it's, it's essentially going to be a combined honours degree. So I suppose in America, it'd be maybe equivalent to having majors and minors. This is where it's two equal amounts of degree and it, you graduate combined. So it's a really positive thing to have. I definitely say look into it. Um, the great thing about our creative campus is it's all on one campus and you can do both of your creative subjects, you know, in the same space. And it's just much easier for you as a student. So um, what I'd say just to know a bit more about them is always go on the course finder on a university's website and just see what combinations are possible because you'll find some are just single honors only. Um, and some have a bit more flexibility. So I hope that answers your question. Great, thank you. I see we have um, a couple more questions in the chat and thank you, Amy and Carlos for submitting your questions. Um, they're saying hi from a snow laden Long Island in New York and from Ecuador. So thank you for joining us. Um, Amy, I think we'll come back to your question in just a moment because we will be talking specifically about conservatoires in just a moment. Um, but Carlos had a question about, um, he would like to know about the nature of postgraduate programs related to music now during lockdowns. How many of my courses will be online? Um, so we know that this is a 
a different semester for students around the world. Um, so I wondered if we could um, hear from uh, Rian and then also from um, Melissa and Katie about um, the adjustments that your universities are taking at this moment um, during the COVID-19 pandemic. Um, Rian, could we start with you? Yeah, sure. Um, I mean, related to Carla's question, we don't offer music, but just in, in to give you a general idea, um, we, we've we been having a blended learning approach since um, our students started in September. Um, so we were having students on, on campus and also learning online as well. Um, so it was a mixture, but we were expecting that our students were based in Norwich. So um, generally they weren't um, in the home country, they were actually here at at the time. Um, obviously at the moment we are in a national lockdown in the UK, uh, in England, sorry. Um, so uh, it's slightly different in that students have not been able to access currently workshops and, and things like that at the moment. However, that is slowly opening. Um, so today we actually opened our um, campus for the first time for a few students um, that could actually come onto campus, which is uh, so nice to have uh, students actually being able to access the things that they that they need. Um, so at the moment we are just working with what the government guidelines are and, and what we're you know what we're allowed to do. Um, and obviously we are hoping and, and expecting that by September 2021 we will either be continuing with, with blended learning or have much more of an open campus, you know, back onto campus. But we are very much expecting that students will be with us. Um, in Norwich and continue learning online and learning on campus um, by that time. That is our, that is our hope. <laughs> <laughs> ours, ours too. <laughs> Katie and Melissa, would you have anything to add from Liverpool Hope's um, perspective? So we, again, similar to Norwich, we don't have a um, postgrad in music yet. There is one in progress and you can find more about that on our website to see when it will be released. But regarding, obviously, these creative programmes now, we're similar where we've got an online approach. Now, we did, um, obviously, in the UK, we've been varying through our different lockdowns in the lead up to Christmas. Um, we had a period where we were going through the precautions of getting students on campus, especially into our theatre for music practice rooms. However, obviously, as lockdown has tightened, that's been um, pushed back now until further notice. And we're just following government guidelines. However, as I say, you know, as all universities have been really attentive to online learning, and we've been very careful to make sure each student has the right equipment at home, obviously for music with recording and making your own creations and compositions, we want to make sure you have all of that to hand. So we tend to have the approach of students if they need anything, they contact the academic directly and all of that's arranged and um, all the logistics are sorted out for them to get the equipment they need sent to their um, accommodation. So everything is seen to, it's just unfortunately we can't have them on campus just yet, just due to the tightness of lockdown. Of course, thank you um, for sharing those updates um, and offering some clarification around the current situation um, in, in England. Um, so our time has quickly passed um, with Rian and Katie and Melissa, but before we go, I do want to ask each of you to share with our audience, how can they get in touch with you? And if they want to learn more about your institution, where should they go to learn more? So Rian, could we start with you, how audiences can get in touch with you if they're interested and where they should go to learn more about Norwich? Yeah, absolutely. So we, um, the best, the best thing to do would be to go onto our website, um, so uh, www.nua.ac.uk, um, and from there you can see that there are some events that you can uh, sign up to, you can download a prospectus, um, and, you know, well, I'd like to say hopefully we'll be coming to visit soon, but we'll, we'll see about that. Um, but if you want to get in touch with me, then um, you can email me, it's international at nua.ac.uk so if anyone has any questions about entry requirements or really you know specific questions anything then then please do do get in touch with us yeah thank you great thank you and 
I'll probably answer for myself and Melissa. Um, so similar to Rianne, if you want to have a little look at um, what we have online, our prospectuses, um, we have course guides and um, information on living in the city of Liverpool, how to get here, what to expect as a student. You can find all of that on our website, which is just www.hope.ac.uk. Um, and similarly, if you want to get in touch with myself and the international team, um, or perhaps our creative projects officer, or anyone at the creative campus at Liverpool Hope, if you can just email international at hope.ac.uk, we can definitely have a little chat with you there and hopefully help to support your application. Fantastic. Well, I wanted to say thank you again so much for joining us today. Um, that's been super interesting to hear more about um, studying creative arts in the UK and learning more about your institutions, um, Norwich University of the Arts and uh, Liverpool Hope University. Um, so thanks again for joining. Thank, thank you. you. Bye. Bye. We're now going to move forward and invite Tom Quante, Senior International Officer from Solent University, Southampton, and Yeva Lakute, Student Recruitment and International Relations Officer from Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Music and Dance, who will continue to help us answer all of your questions about studying creative arts in the UK. If you recently joined us, today's session is focusing on everything related to creative arts in the UK. So please make sure to drop your questions in the chat and we'll continue to answer as we go along. Um, I know we have a question to come back to um, from Amy, but I think I'll start just with welcoming you. Thank you, Yeva and Tom um, for joining us today. Hello. Hi, nice to connect with you in this digital format. Great. I wanted to start quickly um, with hearing from both of you, if you could share with us a little bit about where your university is based within the UK, or I should say your university and the conservatoire are based within the UK, um, and a little bit about your institution. Um, so Yeva, could we start with you? Yeah, sure. Uh, so I work at Trinity Laban Conservatoire of Music and Dance. And as the name suggests, uh, we specialize in uh, performance training in dance, music and musical theater. And we've also just uh, launched a new course, uh, which is BA Music Performance and Industry. So we have a popular music element now as well. And we are based in Greenwich in London. So it's the southeast uh, part of London. Um, it's a really beautiful place. and. Um, at the moment our buildings are closed because of the national lockdown but usually there's a lot of face-to-face -face teaching um there's a lot of master classes and performance training for all our students fantastic and tom could you share with us a little bit about Solent university southampton um where it's based within the uk and a little bit about the institution of course i can um hello uh so we're based in southampton which is a waterfront city in the south of england it's about a, an hour just over an hour away from from london itself by by train um and uh, we began life uh as an art school many many years ago uh, and have since expanded we've always kept creative arts as a as a main core subject for us and so we offer fashion film television media uh musical theater um, acting and performance, but we have expanded to include uh, other subjects such as sports, um, uh, maritime, business, law, criminology. But our foundations are very much still in the creative arts. Um, so we, yeah, we, we continue to offer our courses in those. Great. Um, well, I think we can now go to Amy's question in the chat. Um, Amy, thanks for writing in. Um, she says, hi, I'm an independent educational consultant specializing in working with performing arts students in the US and around the world based in currently snow laden Long Island in New York. Um, can you please explain the difference between which schools use UCAS with the five school um, limit of applying and which conservatoires can be applied to outside of those five with their own applications? Um, so I wondered if we could start with you, Yeva, to talk about um, that difference between how students might apply um, if they're applying via UCAS um, or if they can apply to conservatoires um, outside of those five choices in UCAS. Um, and maybe you could also talk a little bit more broadly about the differences in studying at a conservatoire versus a university. Yeah, sure. Um, and just to say as well, last year at this time, I was actually in New York uh, with our music oh. audition. 
So it's uh, nice, so nice to hear from uh, Amy there. Um, so yeah, I guess the um, the main difference between applying to university or conservatoire is that uh, so there's the UCAS system, which is primarily for for UK universities, where you can apply to up to five different um, universities or courses uh, from all over the UK. Whereas uh, there's a separate system. Um, that comes under UCAS, but it's called UCAS conservatoires, uh, where you can apply up to nine different conservatoires in the UK. So as far as I know, there are nine conservatoires uh, taking part in this scheme, um, including us as well. So the in terms of the uh, application, you can actually actually apply to up to six uh, different choices on UCAS conservatoires, and you can apply simultaneously to UCAS and UCAS conservatoires. Uh, so they're sort of two different uh, systems. Um, in terms of the application itself, so for a lot of the conservatoire degrees, um, there is an audition requirement. So at the moment, lots of conservatoires, including us, are accepting recorded auditions. Um, but the, the application process in terms of you have to still write your personal statement, um, submit your um, course, uh, your kind of grades uh, on the UCAS or UCAS conservatoire system, uh, provide, uh, I think it's two references at the moment, um, and um, the fee is very similar as well. I think it's £26 for an application. So um, if you apply uh, for just UCAS conservatoires, there's only one fee, which is uh, the £25, or if you apply uh, for both, then you have to pay uh, the fee twice, unfortunately. Uh, but that does give you more uh, choices. Um, and also just to mention that uh, some conservatoires uh, do have do charge an audition fee as well so just be mindful of that too great thank you um and tom going to you um i wanted to ask so we've been talking about auditions and portfolios as part of the application process and could you tell us about which university courses in the uk typically require an audition or portfolio yeah, so these are going to be courses that uh, we require a little bit more than just your personal statement and an understanding of why you want to study a course. And quite common ones are graphic design that will certainly require a portfolio, um, film production, uh, possibly uh, musical theatre may require an audition. Uh, and, and really what it's what it's there for is to, to for our academics to get an understanding of your ability and your experience in that specific field. Um, and these are things that you definitely couldn't be able to show uh, without actually a, a, a practical piece. Um, so a portfolio might show, you know, all the graphic design work you've done uh, up until now or some of your, your finest work. Um, an audition will be able to show your range, what you're comfortable with or what you're not so much comfortable with. And this is an opportunity as well for our academic staffs to understand your personality and your interests and to see if you're best fitted uh, for the course. So it's a two-way street. And often some people can find auditions and portfolios a little bit daunting because they're not really sure what to put in them. But our, but our academics are there to see really what interests you, what sparks you, um, and, and what are your strengths within the field from a practical point of view. Uh, and also, does that marry up nicely to what the course offers and is the course a, a good fit for you? Great, thanks. And. Eva, you touched a little bit on this earlier, um, but could you give us a little bit more details around what subjects students can study at a conservatoire? Yeah, sure. Um, so, yeah, in, in terms of uh, the different um, study options available. So as I mentioned, there are nine different conservatoires in the UCAS conservatoire scheme. So um, each one will have its own strengths and specialisms. So it's really important that if you're looking at uh, applying to a conservatoire that you really research uh, what the different conservatoires offer. So in terms of Trinity Laban, we offer specialist training in music, musical theater and dance, as I mentioned. Um, and other uh, conservatoires uh, may also offer, um, you know, things like theater, uh, drama courses. Um, most of them will offer a music, uh, music degree training, um, but they will have other specialisms as well. Some even offer film and TV uh, too. So um, I think the best place to start if you're just kind of starting out in your research and you're not sure whether to apply for university or a conservatoire um, is probably the UCAS Conservatoire's website. So there's lots of uh, videos there um, 
that tell you more about the differences. Um, and they also kind of showcase the different um, institutions in terms of what they look like, what the campus life is like. Um, and there's also lots of helpful tips on how to submit your application. So uh, I would say that's probably the best place to start for anyone interested in conservatoire study. Great, thank you. That's great advice. Um, so we just yeah, heard about the types of courses that can be studied at a conservatoire, including at Trinity Laban. Um, moving to you, Tom, if students are interested in applying to Solent University, what types of degree programs do you offer? I know you talked about this a little bit already, but could you tell us a little bit more? Of course. Uh, so, as I've mentioned already, we specialise in creative arts subjects, but we're, our main focus is what we call world-ready degrees. And these are degrees uh, that, that are taught in the way to prepare our students, sorry, prepare our students uh, for uh, employment in their sector and for careers in their sector afterwards. Now, it's quite common for a university to say that, but we do that by embedding such things as like in, bringing in links with industry, advocating placements, all of our courses have an opportunity to have a placement. Uh, we work uh, with the sector uh, around Southampton and beyond in the south of England to ensure that what we're teaching lines up with what the industry wants as well. So um, that is our main focus. So in addition to that, we also offer, uh, as I've mentioned, business law. Uh, we have a very popular LLB in law. Uh, we run a criminology degree. We've, we've got a maritime, uh, Warsash Maritime Academy for those that are interested in shipping and port management. Uh, we've got a variety of different sports courses, health and nutrition sciences. Uh, we have uh, business um, and accounting. Uh, but in terms of as, we are, as we're on a creative arts uh, seminar now, uh, really, we look at fashion and that could be fashion management and marketing, fashion photography, uh, film and media production. As I've mentioned, musical theatre and acting performance. A graphic design, illustration, 3D design, animation. So there's a whole range uh, really of, of, of courses available. Um, and within that, I guess the website uh, is, is really useful in terms of breaking down what, what each course entails and, and what units are available in each course. I think certainly uh, for, for us, we've used this time with the pandemic to, to make sure will access information so there's a great opportunity on the website to to book a book an open day a virtual open day experience uh, or if the time zones don't quite match up for you in the states you can take an on-demand open day and, and speak to academics uh, at your leisure for, for for one of the courses that interests you as well great thank you I see we have another question um, thank you Amy um, for submitting your question in the chat so um, Amy's asking for the if the UCAS Conservatoire application works similarly to the UCAS application in that one application and therefore one personal statement goes to all the schools that you're applying to. Um, and then Amy's also asking if a student could use the same personal statement for both the UCAS and the Conservatoire applications. Um, so Yeva, could we start with you with that question? Yeah, sure. Um, so yeah, the two systems maybe are a little bit confusing, but hopefully I can help to clarify. Um, so um, yeah, in terms of um, the personal statement, it works the same as, a, as the UCAS application system. So there's one personal statement that can be sent to up to six different uh, conservatoires or six different uh, courses. Um, so you could, in theory, you could use the same personal statement that was written for the UCAS scheme, but it's because the uh, conservatoire training is so specialist and sort of there is some academic work involved but it's much less academic than uh, the the education at, received at university so um, it would be best to kind of really adapt the personal statement to to suit um, the requirements of a conservatoire um, so conservatoire training generally um, leads to um, you know if you want to be a performer an actor a musician uh, that's most likely that you, you would be suited for a conservatoire. Whereas if you're interested in more like the, I don't know, the, the theory, the history of the, uh, for, for example, musical theater or music, or if you want to be um, a music critic, that's maybe you're better suited for a university degree in that case. Uh, so there are those uh, differences. Um, so I'm just uh, reading through the second part of the question just seeing if I answered everything. Um, 
Yeah. So um, yeah, and just to to clarify, yeah. So there's five uh, different choices for UCAS, and then six for the UCAS Conservatoire. So because there are two completely different um, kind of sets of application systems, um, you would need to uh, fill out the application form twice, and uh, those would those would be completely separate. Great. Uh, thank you, Yeba, um, and thank you again, Amy, for submitting that question. Um, so Tom, coming back to you, so you told us about the whole range of degree options available at Solent. So what are your top tips for students when they're choosing which degree program to study? Yeah, sure. I mean, firstly, what I would do, I always say th consider three things. The first, first is the city that you're going to be studying in, because ultimately that's where you're going to live uh, and spend some of your life. Uh, the second one is the university. Uh, does the university uh, look good to you? Does it fit your needs? Is it? Can you see yourself studying there? And then the third one is the course. Uh, and, and, and this is not just which course you study, but where you study that course, because courses can differ from university to university. Uh, I would say do your research, ultimately. For example, if that's a graphic design course you want to study, have a look at each university's website. Look at the modules and look at uh, which uh, what's going to be taught to you throughout each year. Um, ultimately, then maybe look at some former student examples, uh, look at what other work students have produced and uh, what, you know, what their journey was as well. Uh, it, can, it can never hurt to speak to an academic. Um, I know sometimes students are a bit shy or... ...that you've got a vested interest in the course and they like to hear from you and ask questions. Um, so to my, to my main my main bit of advice really would be do something that you that interests you because there's nothing worse than investing your time and your money in a, in a degree program that doesn't invest uh, invest back in you and, and that you're not interested in um, do something with one eye on the future uh, you know what what do you want to be and how is what you're going to study going to help you get there is it going to advance your skill set in a way that you couldn't have done before um, or is it going to open new doors for you in a way that wouldn't be possible before? Um, and then ultimately, uh, ending with really where I started was do the research into the degree programme. Uh, there are lots of universities, there are lots of different degrees you can study, but to, to get all three right will mean that you have a really good time in the UK. You, and, you know, if you're enjoying your course and you're enjoying your subject and you're enjoying where you live, your experience of the UK will be a lot more positive than if you're not. So it is worth... Uh, quite often students do look at just the course and just the university or focus just on the ranking and, and okay that's that's good to look at but it's also an experience going to to university study at university or, or at conservatoire so it, it has to be something that is is interesting for you and that you can really visualize and see yourself doing oh, that's really great advice thanks tom um, i think we have time for one more question coming in from the chat and thank you amy for your questions on these these are great questions um so Amy's asking about application deadlines, if those differ between conservatoires and universities that students would apply to through UCAS, and how finite are those deadlines? Um, and then we can go into also if conservatoires offer clearing. So Yeva, maybe we could start with you if you want to talk about the deadlines at Trinity Laban. Um, and then, Tom, we could go to you to talk about deadlines um, for universities that students apply to through UCAS. Sure. So um, I can kind of tell you about our deadlines and how those have been slightly impacted by the COVID restrictions. Uh, so our on-time, uh, we have two deadlines actually on UCAS Conservatoire. So our on-time music deadline, uh, music application deadline for undergraduate uh, and foundation degrees uh, is October 15. Um, however, it's slightly different for international students because we know that it maybe takes a longer time to decide which uh, you know institution is the right place for you and, and to uh, organize lots of other things for your um, application. So we are quite flexible uh, when it comes to international students uh, about those deadlines. And then uh, 15th of January is uh, typically, um, so October 15 is for music and musical theatre. And then we have another deadline, which is January the 15th, which is typically our deadline for dance. Um, and again, it, it slightly, uh, we can be slightly more flexible with international students. Um, this year, uh, these deadlines have actually been extended uh, 
to the end of January. And we have also extended our um, the recorded audition deadline for some of our um, courses. So, um, so the first step, I guess, to applying to a conservatoire is submitting the application on UCAS conservatoires. And then the second step would be typically uh, to submit a audition. So um, it's in normal times, we also travel, like I mentioned, to, uh, to USA and other countries to host uh, in-person auditions to give students a chance to meet us in person and to kind of get a flavor of the type of training that we offer uh, with our teachers. Um, but this year, as we're not able to do that, of course, um, we are accepting all um, auditions online. So there's lots of guidelines on our website. And once students apply, we provide them with a lot of information and uh, video tutorials on how to submit an application and, and uh, do their um, recording uh, sort of so that they feel confident when they're doing it. Great. And just to quickly follow up, um, Yiva, while we're on uh, conservatoire applications, do conservatoires participate in clearing or offer clearing? Um, yeah, so it, it depends on the institution. Uh, for us, uh, typically, um, we, we do sometimes offer um, kind of late selection option. Uh, so um, for some of our courses, uh, we, like I mentioned, we extend the deadlines uh, depending on the circumstances. But for some courses, I mean, we, we just quite often receive so many applications, especially for musical theater uh, that we don't sort of uh, participate in clearing. We, we don't have the capacity to kind of um, accept that large number of students. So um, just, just to kind of illustrate, we're a very small uh, specialist institution. So we have about 1,200 students across uh, all our degrees. So it's a very close knit and small community. So, um, so we kind of tend to um, select most of our students by the time clearing comes around. Um, and this also gives them you know, lots of time to prepare for their studies. Great, thank you. And Tom, could you tell us about the deadlines at Solent um, and I guess also mention if Solent uh, participates in clearing? Sure. Um, yeah, so the, the UCAS deadline for, for universities is, is, is typically in January um, and uh, it was obviously passed. Now it, now it was postponed uh, down uh, due to the COVID pand pandemic um, and we are still accepting students beyond that deadline. So um, I don't want to call it a soft deadline, but it's something that students need to be mindful of. Um, but ultimately, we do still accept students beyond that deadline. Um, so what the, the thing I would say with getting an application in is never leave it to the last minute, reg regardless, because the, your choice is more limited the later you leave it. If you're pragmatic and proactive about it and you get an application in, uh, you might choose not to go and to that university eventually, but at least you've you've done what you need to do uh, for for the one that you do decide to go to. Uh, the university is aware of you; it can make you an offer, and you're going to get better choice of accommodation. You're going to get information faster, and ultimately, you will just have a better experience within the application process. And quite often, students do think, "Oh, I've got a few that I uh, I, I, I I'm aware of, but I, I'm not going to apply to any of them." But that really isn't great for any of the universities and ultimately those that are applying sooner will get the better pick in, in terms of a choice of accommodation and get their offer letters sooner. There's also the visa process which can take time so it's always good to get an application in sooner than later and finally scholarships. Uh, scholarships, university, our, our university in particular looks favourably of students that can submit their applications in a timely manner. Uh, and, and they're more likely to get scholarship. So it is worth doing. Um, and again, like I said, you're not bound to that university if you choose not to go. It's it's just being organised. Uh, we do participate in clearing uh, and most UK universities do as well. Um, and clearing is an, has really transformed in the last few years, I would say, to uh, going from from when it used to be like sort of like students looking at universities for the last few spaces now to universities looking at where they can what students are still available or which students are still considering university and we're also aware that the pandemic has meant that people have pushed their decision making back uh, with the travel restrictions and everything in place uh, it, it's, it is very strange right now to think about applying to study in a foreign country but um you know we are optimistic and hopeful as i'm sure we all are that things will be back to normal or a little little bit closer to normal by September and 
uh, we would encourage students to apply and, and not leave it to clearing. Clearing, uh, I think, often gets uh, painted with the whole uh, last minute type thing, uh, whereas you could just decide to go. But but really, it, it, sh it shouldn't be that clearing. Clearings there as, a, as another opportunity to look at your university or to decide where you want to go. But the research should have been done way in advance of that. Great. Thanks, Tom. Um, so sadly, our time is coming to a close, Atheva and Tom, but I wanted to say thank you again to both of you for joining us today and for sharing so much information about your institutions and the programs available. Um, so we have some questions in the chat and I think it'd be great to wrap up with uh, Yeva and Tom. If you could each share how uh, students interested, you know, parents of students, counselors can get in touch with you and also how they can learn more about your institution. So Yeva, if we can start with you and then we'll go to you, Tom. Sure. Uh, so uh, yeah, uh, a good place to start uh, your research if you're interested in Trinity Lab and is our website. So that's www.trinitylaben.ac.uk um, and there's lots of information there about our programs there's lots of kind of uh, videos and imagery so you can see where we are based and what our buildings look like um, there's also all our staff and alumni profiles so you can see uh, you know which teachers uh, teach at Trinity Lab and, and also what our alumni um, have kind of gone on to do um, after they've graduated um, but uh, in terms of um, yeah, if you wanted to contact us, the email is contact at trinitylaben.ac.uk um, and we also offer a range of virtual open days. Um, there's one coming up for strings, particularly uh, in March. And maybe just to mention quickly, I, I saw the question from Carlos about postgraduate music study. Uh, just to mention to anyone interested in postgraduate degree, it's probably best to email only because uh, we have a lot of different types of postgraduate degree options. So they range for from a shorter kind of uh, diploma programs to the full kind of master music programs. And we, we find that postgraduate route is, uh, is kind of slightly different than the undergraduate routes. And, and people have a lot of individual requirements and kind of um, aspirations for what they want to achieve from the course. It's always best to email us and then we can discuss your individual requirements uh, more thoroughly and with our program leaders. Okay, thank you. Great, thank you. And that, that email to get in touch would be on the website as well? Uh, yes, it would be, yeah. If you, um, if you search for our contact details, it should come up there. Fantastic. Thank you, Yeva. And Tom, how can um, students, parents, counselors who are interested in getting in touch with you um, and also who are interested in learning more about Solent University, um, where should they go? Very same as, same as uh, Leva, really. Um, the, the, best, the best place to go for information is, is the website. Uh, and as I said earlier, like the website is there for, um, for students to be able to engage with as much as possible. Um, and um, uh, that's that all the course information and all the academics information uh, uh, is listed there as well. Uh, thanks to uh, the British Council who've just put, put up the website address, solent.ac.uk. Um, you know, you can contact any of the academics on the course. You can contact me directly if you like, um, or contact international at solent.ac.uk, and we'll be able to direct your queries there. Um, but we're also running throughout the, the, the summer um, our own webinar series where we focus on a different theme each each uh, each session. Uh, we've been doing visa guidance. We've been doing life in the UK, preparing to to to, to join or to study in the UK. Um, as hear from our students. So there's lots and lots of webinar sessions. I, I mean, this is one of the advantage for the pandemic for international students is I think there's so much rich uh, online content now uh, that previously there, there might not have been that before because we were all off traveling around the world, which is great, but it means that you only got a snapshot of us when we were in your country. Now uh, we're on online um, and you can access things a lot more easily. Uh, so yeah, so do focus on the website, you know, have a look if you've got the five universities uh, on, 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 on that you're undecided on. Have a look on each of their websites and read through the information. And don't be afraid to get in touch. Uh, we're here to help and we're here to answer questions for you. So, so do do that. Great, thank you, Tom, and thank you again to both of you for being here today. Um, it was a great chat. Um, and thank you everyone for joining us, for watching, um, for submitting questions. We really appreciate you being here today. Um, we hope this information helps you um, 
in preparing to study in the UK and study a creative arts course on behalf of the British Council and our guest speakers today, we just want to say a wholehearted thank you for joining. And we are holding another uh, Facebook Live Q&A here um, tomorrow at the same time. We'll be focusing on more general questions around undergraduate and postgraduate options in the UK. So if that sounds interesting to you, join us back here tomorrow. And we hope you all stay well, stay safe, and we look forward to being in touch. Thank you. Bye. Bye-bye, thank you.